Good afternoon, YouTubers. I wanted to show my uh, plasma table. I don't think I ever done a much of a video on it. I built this uh, two or three years ago. Um, been using it quite a bit and been a very uh, handy piece of equipment here in the shop. Amazing what he can do. I buy all these uh, s s pieces of scrap at the scrap dealer. Uh, and sometimes, you know, four by four or larger sheets of all kinds of stuff, perfectly usable. And so I'm able to utilize a lot of that uh, here today where I cut the. Uh, base and a mount for the to mount the, uh, the device to the welding table it's a half inch uh, it's, table is so I can fit a 4x8 sheet on there um, seem like a lot of the stuff now is 4x10 uh, so kind of wish maybe made it a little bit bigger but man it just very seldom uh, but you need the full sheet. The, the only thing is on the water table here, the grate sits down lower than the the pan that I built. So I think what I need to do is uh, trim this in so it's a, a level with the uh, the grates. And that way I can just hang the extra two foot over the end. Otherwise, it's at a little bit of an angle and. Even though we got torch height, uh, still like to keep it as level as possible. It's all chain driven. Uh, all, all of these pieces were uh, built here. Mainly, uh, a lot of the stuff I. Uh, Rough cut it out with the by hand on the with the plasma, and then took it to the milling machine and uh, milled it down to final specs uh, to get everything nice, square, and the dimensions that it needed to be. Uh, the, the, I had purchased some plans from uh, to do this. A guy had them for sale on the internet. There, uh, twenty-five dollars for a set of plans that. Uh, I basically probably just covered the the cost of the CD is the way I figure uh, for the details that he provided and information and stuff with uh, well worth many times more than that uh, ha all these pieces uh, he had uh, both the CAD files and PDF files so it was easy to make all these pieces of course you know a few things here and there like the table uh, he just kind of gave ideas and then you kind of you could you could have done it many different ways and, and came up with the same results um, we do have a rack and pinion back here a belt drip for the And this is probably the the torch height probably was the hardest part. Uh, wasn't really any clear directions exactly how to do it, just pictures and um, plus I you know used material that I had available to me, and by looking at the pictures, we came up with our own design. Uh, the torch comes down uh, to get the height. I'll trip the safety on it, but anyway, it touches and it, it lit. It's free floating just a little bit. And as you can see, a rod comes up and hits the switch. So that tells the computer where the uh, surface of the metal is, and then of course it'll raise up whatever the setting is above that. A uh, couple of linear bearings. And I also, in case you have a 
mess up way uh, it, it's held on uh, with magnets. I don't know what else here. Well, I guess I can show you the controller here. Here's the computer. Uh, there again, <laughs> hauled home. Uh, uh, found this at the scrap dealer also. It's uh, used to be a lead acid battery charger. Of course, it was already gutted out. It was just the uh, the housing of it. And so we uh, mounted it on some wheels so we can roll it around. Here's the torch height, our automatic torch height. Uh, it uh, senses the voltage and uh, if, you, if your metal warps or uh, isn't sitting flat, way, it, it'll automatically adjust the height depending on uh, the voltage. Um, there again, some of this stuff was a little bit, <clears throat> took a lot of digging, uh, especially for the plasma cutter. I got a Hypertherm 65 and uh, as you've seen, I, I'm using a hand torch instead of the uh, machine torch. Uh, they were just a lot cheaper. And the, the wiring aren't, isn't the same. And so after uh, a lot of searching, I finally found somebody that had posted what the, uh, in between the schematics that, that came with it, I was able to, uh, I think I had to switch one, one of the pins on the end of the, uh, the torch there to get it to uh, sense that it was a, uh, or, or tell the, plasma cutter that it was had a machine torch on it otherwise it wouldn't uh, uh, the computer wouldn't uh, couldn't control uh, to turn it uh, turn it on and off <clears throat> and of course you see in the back here this wire right here the PC control uh, controls the torch on and off and it also that's where it reads the voltage or the height control reads the voltage from uh, inside of course you just had a had an old computer laying around that still works and uh, kind of a kind of a mess in there I'm not much of a electrician kind of put everything together to to get it to work in and then I was going to go back and clean it up and of course here we are I guess as long as it still works and not in there very far. One issue that I did have is uh, I kept throwing a emergency stop on it and well, when I first got it going I had it on the other end of the shop and everything worked great and so then I moved added on and I moved it to its current location and when I started to cut way especially on heavier metal it, it would just uh, safety out and I boy I fought it and fought it and fought it and done a lot of research and I uh, drilled a hole in the concrete and drove a couple of ground rods and nothing I did seemed to really help except moving it the computer away from the table seemed to uh, solve the problem 95 percent of the time but every now and then it still would do it uh, so what i did was i came across uh, something about uh, you know the plasma art getting into your uh, causing RF into your electrical lines and so I purchased this uh, battery backup or UPS backup UPS and uh, I plugged everything into that 
and I've never had any problems since. So, uh, definitely was getting into the uh, to the main power somehow, and the computer wasn't very happy with it because <clears throat> everything is uh, grounded and shielded. And so anyway, we're glad to. I, I was kind of rearranging in here. I might try to move it back closer to see what happens uh, so it's not uh, a little more out of my way, a little closer. Uh, another thing I just added, uh, I, I was using a game controller, you know, for like positioning your metal and with the computer away away from it, well, it was hard to stand here and look to see how close you were. So uh, my controller quit working. It was just a fifteen dollar Chinese thing, and I, I, I wanted to do or find something a higher quality, but most of them were. Uh, either had to buy a Bluetooth receiver or it just wasn't plug and play too much and so I found this uh, wireless keyboard I think it's mainly for uh, designed for home theater use but anyway I'm able to just now carry this with me and uh, uh, we, I knew I told you we threw a safety. So. So we'll see how long that lasts out here. Problem in the shop, you got dirt, dust, and a lot of uh, metallic dust uh, from grinding and that sort of thing so it's kind of hard on computers and, and that sort of thing anyway I thought we'd uh, not all we have uh, have on that so uh, we'll see you later